Hi friends, welcome back to the Shark Attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Pictures floated in and out of Chet's mind. Fuzzy pictures, men lifting him off the dock, the inside of Dr. J's motor car, the white walls and white sheets of the hospital, unsmiling doctors shaking their heads, a pretty nurse with a soft voice, and Uncle Jerry who always seems to be sitting right next to Chet. Was Chet asleep? Was he awake? Was he alive? Or was he dead? That's a shark tooth. Mm -hmm. They're, they got a ton of them. It was two days before Chet decided for sure he was alive, and three more before he understood what had happened to him, that the shark had ripped away part of his calf. Another few seconds, and that shark would have taken off his whole leg. It will heal, the doctor said, patting Chet on his shoulder. It will take some time, but your leg will heal. The miracle kid, Uncle Jerry, said Uncle Jerry. That's what the newspapers are calling you, and it's true. By then, Chet had heard about the others. The boy attacked a mile down the creek from Elm Hills, and the man who jumped in to try to save him, both were dead. Chet's room was filled with flowers and cards from people all over the country, but none of it mattered to him. His leg hurt worse than it had when the shark was biting him. The medicine they gave him Me. made him feel sick and woozy. He wanted Mama and Papa, but their train was still making its way across the country. Every time Chet fell asleep, he woke up suddenly shaking with fear. His bed soaked. Mm -hmm. Sweat? With yes. sweat. The terror faded some when he was awake, but somehow that shark was always lurking, its black kill black killer eyes watching him, and bloody teeth were glistening. Chet had never felt so alone. Chapter 15. I'll read this one. Right. It was Chet's sixth morning in the hospital when there was a knock on his door. At his door, excuse me. He sat up, sure it was Mama and Papa, but it wasn't. Dewey said and Mommy stood in the doorway. Uncle Jerry was right. Behind in the doorway, Uncle Jerry was right. It was right behind them. The hospital was a two-hour trip from Elm Hills. Had the guys really come all this way to see him? They all looked a little scared, and Chet felt nervous. Are they still mad at him? Chet raised an eyebrow. <laughs> his ah, his hand and gave the briefest. Tiniest. Tiny. The briefest, tiniest wave. And just like that, the guys came barreling across the room, finding each other for a spot on his little bed. Their jostling hurt his leg, but Chet couldn't have care of us. I'll be in the hallway, could have said Uncle Jerry. I think that pretty nurse likes me. Uh. Uh, he has a crush. The door closed, and all the guys started talking at once. They dynamited the creek. A guy caught a shark in the bay. Says it's the same shark. It was ten feet long. They cut it open its stomach. They found human bones. Of course, Uncle Jerry had told Chet all this but he didn't stop the guys from telling him again he liked the sound of their voices around him he hoped they were they, they never stopped talking they told him that that captain wilson was a celebrity that newspaper reporters were coming from around around the world to talk to him your uncle says said your leg will be okay dewey said you're going to have a huge scar sid said he sounded almost jealous. <laughs> Chet hadn't looked too closely at his leg when the nurses changed his bandages. That was when. What's jealous mean? It means like he he didn't want um, the other person to have it. He wanted it. Nice. It hurt the most when they washed the wound. He had to keep his eyes close, tight, and fight down on a rag to keep from spraying until. The cleaning was done. A chunk of flesh was missing from his calf. He'd have more than a scar. He'd have a limp. What's a, what's limp? a limp? It's when you're, you're, when you're walking. That's called your gait. Your gait. And it, it'll be off. Like it'll favor one side or another. Just like me, Uncle Jerry had said, it won't slow you down a bit. 
Minnie keeps asking about you. Do you check wonder that what Minnie would think of a boy with a limp? Sid moved a little closer to Chip. We're st sorry, he was. We're sorry for everything, said Monty. Sid looked like he was about to cry. It's my fault. What? Sid, you didn't put the shark in the creek. Sid laughed a little, wiped his eyes on his sleeve. We couldn't. We could. We should have listened to you, Monty said. If we had gotten out out of the water, you wouldn't have been have gotten bitten. And if you hadn't come, to we said we'd be. But if I hadn't played that stupid prank, Chet said, you would have believed me. You saved me, Sid said. You guys saved me, Chet said. He swallowed hard, and they all sniffed a little. Sniffled. Sniffled a little. Then a hush came over the room, and, it, and in that quiet moment, Chet realized something. What's that sound? Oh, keep going. Oh. He and the guys would have be, would always be tied together by the terrible things he, they'd seen, but by what they'd done for each other. It was a while before Sid said, we're calling a truce. No more pranks. As usual, nobody argued with Sid. It was settled. The guys stayed all afternoon until Uncle Jerry poked his head in and said it was time to go. Oh, we've got to stop there. We'll stop on that page. Wait, what? We're six, and, six, hour, six minutes in. Come on. Oh, look. See you next time. <laughs> Good job on your reading.